Since the 1900s, modern beekeepers have treated the bee as a machine that produces honey. We have started to interfere with the natural selection of bees, which has created a situation where bees are more susceptible to diseases, mites, and other problems that they normally would never have encountered. Honeybees have been declining throughout the world in the last several decades. Since 2006, some beekeepers have been losing more than half of their hives every winter due to a new phenomenon called colony collapse disorder, as well as due to a number of diseases and pests that have spread throughout the country and world. I'm here to present a part of the solution to the bee epidemic, one that you can put in practice in your own town. The solution is called a bee sanctuary. In Davis, there's a new bee sanctuary, which is a demonstration bee-friendly garden and apiary where amateur beekeepers learn how to cultivate a loving relationship with the honeybee through natural, no-treatment beekeeping methods. The sanctuary also provides habitat for the 60 species of native bees that call Davis home. Members use a variety of beehive styles, share tools and ideas, inspect hives together, and collectively manage a bee-friendly permaculture demonstration garden. At the Davis Bee Sanctuary, members of the Davis Bee Collective keep bees safely using no chemicals or treatments with the following fundamental principles. One, making the bee species an overarching priority over any single hive. Two, not to interfere with the process of natural selection. And three, using bees from the local population. One of the best sources of bees is locally caught swarms from untreated locally adapted stock, be they feral bees or from a local beekeeper who breeds his or her bees and doesn't treat them with chemicals or treatments of any sort. Your goal should be to have locally adapted, untreated bees. Treatments are harmful to the bees for two reasons. One, they disrupt the microbial culture that has developed over the last 100 million years with the bees. Two, by propping up genetic stock that cannot survive the conditions in which it lives. This video will show you a day at the Davis Bee Sanctuary and invite you into the world of the bees. Before inspecting the bees, make sure to puff some smoke into the entrance of the hive five minutes prior to opening the lid. Smoking the bees makes some of the bees go head first into honey cells and ignore everything else going on. Smoke also has an overpowering smell that covers up the alarm pheromone that the bees emit when an intruder opens up the hive. Therefore, a warning or danger signal never gets passed on to the next bee and defensive reactions are minimized. To start a smoker, simply put a piece of paper or burlap in your smoker and add a little of your fuel to get it started. Materials you can use as your fuel include dried pine needles, mesquite, cardboard, leaves, sawdust, old twine, or burlap. Steady full strokes of the bellows will keep things burning. Add fuel slowly until you have a bed of coals and good thick smoke. At the end, stuff some green grass or leaves on top of the fuel before closing the smoker. This acts as a spark arrester and cools the smoke. The smoke needs to be cool, and you have to make sure that sparks and flames don't shoot out and burn the bees. The needs of the bee are simple. Keeping bees requires little more than providing them with a simple shelter in which to create their comb store their honey, and raise their young. All you need to do is provide housing for the bees. They will do the rest. If you are a beginner beekeeper, I strongly suggest you wear a veil and light colored clothing. Avoid wearing perfumes or strong scents. Never eat bananas around bees. And make sure to calm your mind with mindful breathing before you open up a hive. Now you can open up your beehive by removing the cover 
In some cases, you may need to use your hive tool to pry off the lid because the bees may have glued it shut with propolis. There are many types of beehives. In Davis, we have topwar hives and Langstroth hives. Today, we're going to be inspecting some topwar hives. A topwar hive has no frames, just top bars from which the bees draw comb. One thing to keep in mind when opening up a hive is to make sure you start inspecting combs that are on the edges with the fewest bees present. The hive tool is used to break apart the top bars that are glued together by propolis. The bees use propolis to seal off their hive from disease and intruders. Propolis can also be harvested by the beekeeper during inspections by simply using the hive tool to scrape off excess propolis wherever you may find it. Then you can store it in a jar and use it as medicine. Before lifting a top bar comb from the hive, make sure the comb is not attached to the sides of the hive. A hive tool or bread knife may be used to free the comb if necessary. When lifting the comb, make sure to avoid flipping the comb up horizontally to avoid breaking it. Much like in Tai Chi, when you're in a beehive moving frames with bees all over the comb, make sure to move carefully and purposely. If you get stung, don't panic. Simply remove the stinger and smoke the sting to prevent more stings. There are many things to learn about the workings of the honeybee colony. The colony acts as a superorganism, and there are three different groups of bees in the hive. There are the worker bees, which comprise more than 90% of the population. There are the drones, which are the male bees. And there's the queen bee. Usually a beehive will only have one queen bee, and she is the mother of all other bees in the hive. When doing a hive inspection, your main goals are to make sure the queen is present, to look for ample nectar and pollen stores surrounding the brood nest, and to inspect for signs of disease. Usually honey and pollen will be located on the edges of the comb, and the brood nest will be located towards the center. A healthy hive will have a lot of brood located in the center of the, of the colony. Brood is easy to identify by its tan cappings. By removing the capping, you will find the larva inside, showing a developing bee in progress. It takes 21 days for a worker bee to develop from egg to maturity. It takes a drone 24 days and a queen 16 days. During the spring and summer, you may find queen cells. Queen cells look like peanut-sized extensions hanging from the bottom of the comb. One of the greatest gifts in nature is to open up a beehive and take a sample of the fresh raw honey inside. Honey is even more amazing for the fact that it takes a honeybee its entire life to generate only a quarter teaspoon of honey. And it takes two million flowers to generate enough nectar to make one pound of honey. When you are finished with your inspection, make sure to return the top bars to the same location in the hive and brush bees out of the way with a bee brush, feather, or your finger to avoid crushing them in the process. Occasionally, depending on where your hive is located, you may find ants invading your colony. One solution for ant control is to use a product called Tanglefoot, which you can easily put around the legs of your hive. 
Tanglefoot is available at local garden supply stores. Another key feature of a bee sanctuary is a solar wax melter, which allows you to purify beeswax for use in making candles and medicine balms. Important things to consider when locating your bee sanctuary is a local source of water, early morning sunlight so the bees start flying early in the day, and nearby food sources. Fresh moving air currents are also helpful because it allows the bees to aerate their hive and evaporate the water out of the nectar to make honey. Make sure the flight path of the bees does not intersect where people often walk. Remember, the bees have survived without human intervention for a hundred million years. So the less you interfere with their activities, the better. By creating a sanctuary for the bees, you will take part in a growing movement of beekeepers refusing to use treatments on their bees and allow the bees to do what they have done so long.